Hello, and thank you for watching Science360 Designer Foods. Look at these two corn chips. How are they similar? How are they different? They look, smell, and taste similar, but they are different. You see, this corn chip is made from corn that contains a gene from a small bacterium that lives in the soil. How did this gene get into the corn? And why would anyone go to the trouble of putting bacterial genes into corn to start with? To find out, we are going to have to meet a new character. No, it's not corn. This little guy is a European corn borer larva. But don't let his size fool you. Farmers know that he's a big problem. The reason that this little guy is so much trouble is that he likes corn. For dinner, that is. Come to think of it, he likes corn for breakfast, lunch, and in between meal snacks, too. Corn borers tunnel into the base of corn stalks and can destroy the plant. They can do a lot of damage, and that means fewer corn chips. Lucky for us, things didn't go that far. Biologists discovered a species of bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis that infected and killed corn borers. Later, we learned that Bacillus thuringiensis produced a molecule called Bt toxin that is deadly to the corn borer along with some other pests. Before long, some farmers started spraying these bacteria or the toxin itself onto their corn and other vegetables. And it worked. The Bt toxin killed the pests and it was safer for humans and the environment than chemical pesticides. That's because Bacillus thuringiensis had billions of years to evolve a toxin that attacks a few specific organisms and ignores others. For this reason, Bt toxin is still used by many organic farmers today. Later, a scientist had an idea. What if we could get corn to make its own Bt toxin? Then the corn could defend itself against pests like the corn borer with much less help from pesticides or repeated sprays of Bt that washed away after each rain. Since Bacillus thuringiensis makes the Bt toxin, it must contain a set of instructions for making this molecule. Just like human cells, Bacillus thuringiensis contains DNA. And this DNA is full of instructions for all of the different protein molecules that Bacillus thuringiensis has to make. One of these sets of instructions is called a gene. We just needed to find the specific set of instructions, or gene, that makes the Bt toxin. Once the scientists isolated the Bt gene from the bacteria, it was time to put it into corn cells. This type of science, where pieces of DNA from one species are inserted into the cells of another species is called genetic engineering. One simple way to get this DNA into a corn cell is with a gene gun, which is a helium-powered device that literally shoots DNA into cells. But shooting naked DNA out of a gene gun would be a little like shooting confetti out of a shotgun. So genetic engineers attach the DNA to tiny gold or tungsten particles. These particles are heavy enough to penetrate the cell wall and carry the DNA into the interior of the corn cells. Next, the gene-coated gold particles are loaded into the gene gun. The gene gun is fired into the petri dish, which has corn cells growing. Some of the corn cells will receive the Bt gene this way, but most will not. Each of these cells can be coaxed to grow up into an entire corn plant. Biotechnologists just select the ones that contain the Bt gene. A gene gun isn't the only way to get new DNA into plant cells. In fact, modern genetic engineers would likely choose to use another bacterium called Agrobacterium tumefaciens, which has evolved a mechanism to inject DNA into many types of plant cells. But however the DNA is added to the corn cells, the result is the same. A young corn seedling with a little extra DNA. In this case, a gene for the Bt toxin. When this corn grows up, it will look just like other corn. It'll taste just like other corn. It'll even smell like other corn. But there will be one difference. This modified corn 
will produce its own Bt toxin to protect itself from pests like the corn borer. Since the additional DNA is now a permanent part of the modified corn cells, its next generation will also contain the Bt gene. So it is possible to make as much of this corn as needed just by collecting and replanting the seeds from the adult corn. We call a plant that has been modified in this way a genetically modified organism. If you've ever heard someone use the word GMO, this is what they're talking about. Today, many types of genetically modified crops are grown. The BT gene has been introduced to lots of common crops grown right here in North Carolina, like corn, soybeans, and cotton. There are also crops that are resistant to the herbicide glyphosate, or Roundup. More recently, plants that produce insulin, a necessary enzyme for diabetics, have also been developed. In fact, even if you didn't know it, most of the corn, soybeans, and cotton grown in the United States and right here in North Carolina is genetically modified. Many people are uneasy about the popularity of genetically modified crops. In particular, they worry about the possible social, environmental, and health risks. For example, it's possible that the process of genetic engineering could create new allergy-producing foods. To protect the public, new genetically modified products are always tested for possible allergens. Scientists do this by comparing the proteins in these foods to those that are known to cause allergens. In the 12 years since genetically modified crops were first introduced, there have been no major health incidents associated with their consumption. We're still only scratching the surface of the possibilities of genetic engineering, and no one knows for sure how this technology may be used in the future. But whatever uses do develop, you can be sure that you can learn about it right here at Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. This has been Science360 Designer Foods. Thank you for watching.